Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as promised, I'm going to show you guys today how to create the banking system that we created using object-oriented programming, but in this time we're actually going to make it a GUI app. So using Tekinta we're going to try and um, create the same banking app that we did using a console application for object-oriented programming, but this time we're going to make it graphical. We're going to have these features in it, so we're going to allow the user to register for an account, we're going to allow the user to log in, Bear in mind our database is going to be a text file so all the details that are going to be stored are stored in a text file for us or just like a blank file and then we're also going to allow the user to deposit money because it's a banking app and every time the user deposits money we need to update the amount or balance in the file we need to allow for the user to withdraw money and allow them to update the file again we also need to allow the user to view balance and personal details and if needed we need to allow them to edit personal details so as you guys see I have a lot of things in mind and this is sort of like a realistic bank GUI app sort of thing so that you can add it to your portfolio and stuff. So we're going to be adding real like uh, real life like validation and all that. So this tutorial might run for about two to three videos so be patient and um, I'll try and upload as um, frequently as possible to try and keep part one, two and three um, one day after the other. So that's enough of the introduction. I'm going to copy these Actually, I'm going to leave them over here because I kind of have them noted down um, somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, new text file, and I'm going to call this bankinggooyapp.py. Now, before I do so, I'm going to create a new folder as well, and I'm going to call this bankinggooyapp. Now, this is because I'm going to have assets as well, like images and all the user files which are going to be stored in there. So, I'm just going to wait for this folder to save. Seems like it's crashed for some weird reason. Uh, give it a second. Okay, here it is. So, Banking GUI app. We have that open now. I'm going to go ahead and Control X and paste that in there. Now, I've also looked for an image already i'm gonna go ahead and extract that from my email so it's just a basic um png file that i've got over here go ahead and download whichever images you want to use for your banking app i'm going to use just one and i just want to kind of show you guys how to do it like import the image that's why i'm going to be using an image make sure you have all your files in one directory so mine's in my banking gui app folder yours should be in your folders so the py file and the image file should be in the same folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit my file and open it in idle. So first off, what I'm going to do is do my imports. So I'm going to make a little comment and say imports and then from Tekinta import star, which means imports everything from Tekinta. We are going to be using the operating system or OS module in this tutorial so that we can read how many files are there which are gonna represent the different user accounts. So import US, OS, I mean. And then finally for the image to be shown in our Tekinta app, we need something called a pillar module. So we need to do from PIL uh, import oops, image TK comma image. Right, so most, for most of you guys, you're not going to have this module installed already. So I'm going to show you guys how to install the module quickly. I'm going to save this up, minimize this down. Go ahead and open my command prompt. And now in here, you need to type in pip install, and then you will type in pillow. Press enter, and then it should do the rest of the stuff for you. So it's saying installing, and it says successfully installed pillow. Now, if this doesn't work for you, this, that just means that you haven't installed Python in your system path. You can quickly look up a tutorial for it, or you can uninstall and install Python again. But while installing it again, make sure that you are taking on the um, add to system path option. And that would allow you to pretty much use the pip module or the um, pretty much the module manager, which is pip right here to install different modules for you. I'm going to close this off because I've already installed that now. Now we're heading back to our py file, which is right here. And now if I run this quickly, just to see if my modules are working, I have a clear sign of no errors. So all my modules are working. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Now, since I've got that working, I'm going to go ahead and create my main screen. Main screen. 
and then it's going to be called master and then I'm going to use TK to initialize the screen. I'm going to set a title for my screen, which is going to be banking. Um, if you guys find this tutorial a bit too fast or too paced for you guys, I've got um, tutorials for beginners based on Tikinta and how to play with the different graphic widgets, which will kind of get you up to mark and help you follow around this tutorial quicker. So I'm going to be linking all those videos in the description just in case you want to watch them. So we've got our main screen. Now I'm going to run this and show you what this looks like. That's about all. So initializing master equals TK gives us this little pop-up window right here. And then master.title gives it this um, title right here, which is banking up. Now if I close this off, I can go ahead and do my image import. So we need to import the image first of all before we actually assign it to a label and then stick it onto our screen. Create a new variable called image, assign that to our image module, dot open, and then you need to mention the um, name of your file. My name of the name of my file is secure.png. So that's gonna sort me out. We also need to overwrite the variable after that. So image equals image dot resize, because I want to resize my image to a specific size. Um, 140, 150 by 150 double brackets uh, and then finally image we need to convert this image that's just been opened into a Tikinta format um, based image so that it can actually read it and place it so image TK which is another module we just um, imported dot photo image and then pass in the image object now once that's complete you might want to run your program just to see if you have any errors mine doesn't so that's all good now I'm going to go ahead and create some labels for my screen. So my first label is going to be the title. So it's going to be like a little header that says what this app is all about. Now a label just lets you put text on the screen. So label uh, brackets master because that's where I'm going to place my label. Comma text equals custom banking beta font. You can also send the font by equaling that to whichever font you want. I'm going with Calibri. Um, and then you can also specify what font size you want in there. Uh, close it with one bracket and another bracket to close the whole thing off. And now I'm going to place it. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you guys briefly how to use grid. So I'm going to use grid now to place this. So grid, um, I'm going to place it on row zero. And then it's going to be sticky equals north, which pretty much means um, put this in the middle of the screen on the very top. And then padding y equals 10, which means it's going to be from the... Let me just run this to show you what that means. Uh, run this quickly. And if you see right here... Oh my god, where did it go? There it is. So if you see right here, this custom banking meter text has a bit of space from the top of the application. That's what the padding pad y or padding y does it leaves top and bottom space so 10 from the top and 10 from the bottom because we're using y if we used x it would leave 10 from the left and 10 from the right so that's that we've got a little title going now not to waste any time i'm going to copy the label again because i need to do another label just to make our app look sort of realistic so i'm going to go ahead and change the text for it to um to most secure bank you've probably used of course right <laughs> anyway i'm going to change the font size to 12 because it's like a little teaser text and then the row will equal one for me sticky will equal north and i'm not going to add any padding because it's already going to have padding from the previous one run this now and we have a nice looking application doesn't look ready at all but we've got two labels on it let's make it look a bit more beautiful now i'm going to add the image in now we need to assign the image that we've stored in that IMG variable to a label. So M, uh, label, we want to place it on master. And then instead of text, we're going to mention that we want to use an image. We use the image attribute and then assign it to the image variable that we just stored. And then we place it on the screen using grid. I want to do it in row two and then sticky north because I want it to be in the center of the screen. And then padding y equals 15 because I want it to have a bit of space from the top and bottom. Cool. So it's looking a bit more decent now. We have custom banking beta, the most we have used, and we've got a nice little image showing up as well. Now we're going to have two buttons on the screen saying one saying login and the other one saying register. 
In this tutorial, I'm just going to cover until the register button and how the code's going to actually register the user or validate that all fields are um, completed and all that stuff. In the next tutorial, we're going to try and get a bit more closer to the finish point, but if we don't finish in the next one, unfortunately, this might be extended to three tutorials. But I'm going to make sure that we complete all the user requirements that we, step, that we discussed in the start. So next thing that we want, since we're done with the labels, is buttons. As I said, we're going to have two buttons. So call the button widget by typing capital B button. And then I want to place it on the master text equals register because one of the buttons register. The other one is going to be login. And I'm going to type in command. Uh, actually, we'll wait for the command for a bit because if I don't create the function, then it's going to get annoyed and give me an error. Font equals Calibrian, comma 12. And I'm actually going to go ahead and set a width for this. So I'm going to do a width of 20 for the button and then I'll place it finally row equals 3, comma sticky equals north because I want it in the middle. Perfect. I'm just going to have to copy and paste the same thing down here again for my login button. So I'm going to change the text to login, of course. And then we only have to change the row to 4. The rest of the stuff should be just fine. Now, since we've got the buttons covered as well, what we can go ahead and do is quickly run this to program to see what it looks like. Right, so it is working, but this register and login button are really close to each other. So let's go ahead and add some padding. So I'm going to do on the second button, I'm going to add pad y equals five. See what that looks like. Okay, it leaves decent amount of space. I guess we're going to do 10 there. Yeah, that looks fine. So it has a register and login button and it leaves a bit of space in the bottom as well. So that's the front page of our actual banking application. Obviously, this is just for beginners, so there's nothing too complicated in here, but it should be enough to be added to your portfolio because we're going to be doing quite a bit with it. So now we need to add some life to these buttons because they're just dummy buttons right now. They don't have any command assigned to them. So let's go ahead and assign them to the commands. Um, so you're going to go inside the properties for the button and not for the properties for the grid. So properties for the button after with command equals. I'm going to call my command register. And I'm also going to do command for login. And command equals login. Right. So those are the two commands done. We're going to have to create functions for those in a second. Now before we do that, we need to do a main loop. So master.main loop. So what this does is when this when this application is run from the command line or when you double click on this application, if you don't add this line called master.main loop, your app will close instantly and then it's sort of like it just crashed. So you need to add this in so that the application can stay in a loop until the user actually presses the X button and just quits. So yeah, that's what this does. Now let's go ahead and create a function. So I'm going to put the functions right under the main screen. I'm going to do functions. And then in here, what we need to do is mention the function that we have. First function, I'm going to do a demi, uh, dummy function, not demi function. Actually, let's do the login a bit later. Let's do the register first, since we're actually working with the register. So register, not going to do anything in there yet. Then we do login. And then here we'll say, um, this is a login page. Cool. So. We're not doing anything in the login yet because that's probably going to be done in the next tutorial. In this tutorial, we're only covering how to do the full registration. So when we have a register, what I want to happen when we click on that button is we need to have a little pop-up window that opens up for us. And then when that pop-up window opens up, um, we should be able to pretty much enter all our details and then press on a button that says register. And then it should just register an account for us using a little file. So let's go ahead and create a pop-up window. So to do that, what you need to do is we need to go into we need to go into the register function which we're in right now, and then type in I'm going to just type in register screen because that's what it is, and then we create a new variable called register screen equals top level uh, lowercase l master now. We're not creating a new window using TK. 
because there's um, by good practice and you should always do this um, you should only really have the main screen that's assigned to TK anything that's a pop-up window or another another pretty much like a part of a GUI application for the main application should be assigned to the top level and then you pass in the main window in here so that's what we've done and what this does is pretty much just creates a little window for us so it does that and then it has the same properties it's inherited pretty much the same properties as its um, master window so I'm gonna have to change that obviously by doing register screen dot title and then we're gonna pass in register because we want it to be called register cool let's go ahead and add our labels now so label uh, I'm gonna do register oh, why did I okay label label and then I'm gonna do register screen because we're not placing this on our master anymore we're placing this on our register screen and then we do text equals please enter your details below to register from our font equals uh, Calibri comma 12 oops forgot to close the comma 12 dot grid row equals zero now we start from row zero again because this is like a fresh screen uh, sticky equals north because we want it right in the center and padding y is going to equals two let's take a look at what we have going over here 10 so padding y equals 10 and then you have to simply um, run your program to just check if this is working so we can quickly check if this is working by pressing on the run button so I'm going to press F5 enter and now if I press register we have a little pop-up window that says register and we have a title that says please enter details to register now in here we're going to create like a form so that and then two buttons that and then one button that's going to let the user register cool so let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to we're going to need a few more labels because obviously we need to let the user know what field of information they need to enter so I'm going to paste this um, four times one two three four cool now I'm going to change the text for each one first one is name second one is going to be age third one is going to be the gender and the fourth one is going to be password because hey you need a password to log in don't you right and then we need to change the rows so rows zero has already been stated so we do row one row two row three row four now we want the sticky to be towards the west and we don't need any padding so west for all of them because we want them to be on the very left of the screen so that there's enough room for an entry because these are just the labels they won't let the user enter anything in there so i'm going to get rid of this sorry about the keyboard noises it's just this cherry mx blue switches are so loud i mean they're satisfying for me but they could be quite annoying in the video so i apologize gonna run this now to see how it looks register and as I predicted we have all the labels showing up now right next to the label on the right hand side we're gonna have entry boxes for the user to enter the information let's go ahead and do that quickly now we're gonna do another section for entries entries and then entry register screen because that's where we want to place it and then we don't need text for this actually uh, I'm gonna place this on grid row equals one and column equals zero so I'm doing row equals one because I want it to be in the same row as the label so let me show you what I mean by that I'll run this and as you see when I do row equals one it goes in the same row as the name label and then it's in a different column though so it's not it's nicely um, it's nice it's nice looking and it's it's just decent it's, it looks like a decent form to have right so I'm gonna close this off and then I need to mention something important so whatever data is entered in this um, entry needs to be saved temporarily into a text variable so we need to type in text variable equals 
and then we're going to assign it to the variable. So we're going to have a variable called temp name. Um, and the same way we're going to have variables for pretty much all these entries to save the information that they're going to be, that the user is going to enter in them. So temp name, temp age, temp gender, and temp password. So this is nothing. So if I actually run it, it's not going to show you anything. Okay, that's wrong. Oh, so basically it's given me the error because all of these variables are still not defined. So we're going to define them quickly. Um, let's define them at the very start. And we're going to call this was or variables. And then temp name equals, they're all going to be string variables. Uh, temp page equals string variables temp gender equals string variable you might argue why am i not doing the age as a integer but it's going to cause problems down the line while saving it to the file so i'm just going to go with string for now and we don't need to specifically have an integer as an age because we're not reusing it anyway so it's all good and temp password equals a string variable again. So what this string var does is it just initialize an empty string variable so that it can be used somewhere. So now if I run this, it shouldn't give me that error anymore because these variables actually exist. Uh, what's the, okay. So I think I forgot to change the, yeah, I did. So I forgot to change the rows. So row one, two, three, and four, instead of just row one, click on register. And as you see right here, we have a nice looking GUI now. We have name, age, gender, and password. So when I enter any detail in here, it straight away gets saved into this little variable that we've created right here that says temp name. If I enter anything in age, it will get saved in temp age. If I enter anything in gender, it gets saved in temp gender. Anything in password, temp password. Now we need to censor this password real quick so that the user can't see what password they're entering in. We do that by going to the entry for the password and then going in and adding a property called show equals speech marks and asterisk. So it's only going to show asterisk instead of the actual characters that the user is typing. So it's kind of censored. Right, cool. So that's about it for the entries. Now we're going to go ahead and create the register button. So now if I can go ahead and create my register button. Buttons button and it needs to be on the register screen text equals register command equals finish oops finish reg which means finish registration font equals calibri i'm going with the same font to keep it consistent and then finally dot grid row equals five comma sticky equals north because I want it to be in the right in the center and pad y equals 10 because I want it to have some space from top and bottom. Cool. Now we need to quickly create this function called finish registration otherwise it's going to have it's going to cause a tantrum. So we're going to do another function called def. Bear in mind this function needs to be above register so that it can actually see it. Finish reg and we just print done in here for now. Right, cool. Run it. And now if I register, we have a nice looking GUI app where we can enter all our details. We press register, it just says done. And we can keep pressing it. And as you see, the password doesn't show anymore as well. Cool. So let's go ahead and actually program the finish reg bit where we actually take the user's details, save it up as a, uh, as a plain file without like, not a text file, but a plain file. And then we also add some validation to, ch to make sure that the user is actually entering all these fields of information. We're also going to make sure that the user cannot overwrite a existing file. So if the user, so if there's a user with the name Johan, the, the program shouldn't allow another user with the same name to pretty much overwrite his file and create a new account. Make more sense in a moment. Anyway, so what we need to do next is quickly need to globalize these variables right here. So since we need the name, age, gender and password we're going to be needing that in the finish reg function and since the variables are local to this function we're going to have to globalize them pretty easy stuff we just type in global temp name uh, 
global temp page global temp gender and global password what this does is it makes these variables um, available to the entire program um, rather than being just available to this register function right here because we're going to be needing them in the finish registration cool so now let's go ahead and do the function the last function of this session so this function is going to look after creating the actual account making sure about validation and all that so this is where the actual logic goes in so my favorite bit let's go ahead and grab all our details so name equals temp uh, name dot get so as i said it temporarily stores it so we need to actually use a get method to actually get the value of that of that field and then it gets stored in the name variable for now now age equals temp age dot get uh, what else do we have gender equals temp gender dot get and then password equals temp password dot get if this stuff is confusing to you guys i really really recommend you guys to go through the few, few of the tutorials that i have about um Tikinta. it will really be helpful if you guys are um, fine so far then that's really good so what we need to do next is we also need to have a track of pretty much all the files that are in our folder since our accounts are going to be stored as files the file name of the file is going to be the name of the user so if i had if a user with name johan was to sign up for example this program would create a new file in this folder and call it johan and there wouldn't be any .txt or anything it would just be johan so we need to kind of know what files are in this directory to make sure that someone with the same name cannot overwrite my file if that makes any sense so what i need to do next is we need to go ahead and uh, find out what files are in our directory so create a new variable called all accounts equal os because as i said before we'll be using operating system to get the list of files that are in my directory so list dir and we we'll just print all accounts for now that will show you what i'm talking about it pass it returns an array of all the files that are in the folder register all right it's because i haven't oh. Wait, hold on, what? Temp password is not defined. Oh, I forgot to add the silly name. Temp in there. So now it's temp password. Now, okay, I did that quite quickly, but guys, what I what I had messed up was I forgot to add the temp and underscore in there. So make sure you have that in your programs. And click on register quickly. This is annoying. And when I click on register, as you guys can see, Right here, I have a list of all the files that are in my directory at the moment. That includes the py file and the png file. Now, as soon as we have populated this directory with actual account files, we're going to get those in there as well. So we're going to use this to validate and make sure that no one is able to overwrite anyone else's file. So let's do that quickly. So we need to do something like... So wait, hold on. Before that, actually... We need to make sure that no one can, so when they click on register, no one can click on register without filling in these fields. Because if they do, we might sort of have an error in the future. Because we're going to have an empty field for name, or we may have an empty field for password, we can't really have that. So the user is going to have to fill all of these fields before pressing register. So let's add that validation first. So if name equals blank, or age equals blank, or gender equals blank or passwords password equals blank then we're just gonna print for now all fields are required uh, else print actually we don't even need the else we're just gonna make a return here and then we're gonna print uh, good to go. Wait. Right, so let's run this quickly to see if our validation works. Register and it says, um, in the background it says all fields required. Let's add some data 
register and it says good to go mate so the validation is working now obviously we don't want it to say all fields will fire in there so we're going to have to add like a little label that's going to hold the notifications such as all fields required, account um, success, account failed, all that stuff. So what you want to do is go back to your register function and in there we're going to have to create a new label. So if you can go to your label section in your register. So this is where the comments come really handy because I thought it's really organized and it's easy to go through it. So go to the end of your label. Create a new variable called notif and then equals that to label register screen. Okay, why am I wasting time? I'm just going to this tutorial is very long. I apologize, guys, but this program is going to be very long. And if I try to make the tutorial shorter, um, this series is going to last forever. I'm going to try and cramp as much as I can in this tutorial. So label and then register screen the text we don't need this field because we're going to be adding the text later based on what error or what success message we get so based on the notification we'll be adding the text later um, this is fine we have to change the row to the row would change to okay so we're not going to use grid here we're going to have to so select the dot grid cut it off and then do notif dot, I mean notif, and then paste the dot grid and all of that stuff in there. We're gonna have to change the row to six. I think it's six. Let me take a look. Yeah, we need to change the row to six because the button's on five. We want a notification to be under the button. Sticky will change to actually north, and then padding y equals ten. This will look nice. Okay. Cool. So when we run this program plain and simply, nothing will show up, but we need to actually add that text. So instead of printing all fields required, what we could do is, actually before doing that, since uh, notif is the label is just local to this register function, we need to make it global. So we do uh, global notif, right, that should sort that out. And now instead of saying all fields required here, we're going to do we're simply going to have to do something like no oh god what's wrong notif.config foreground which is the color of the text equals red and text equals all fields required asterisk oh so that's that now every time the user doesn't fill in any of these details we'll have a nice little notification that says all fields required and I can prove that to you by running it right now. Hopefully you have no errors. Register, register. All fields required. It looks pretty nice. And then if I just do that, it's still here because obviously we haven't changed that text with anything else. Right. So what we need to do next is we're going to have to code the rest of the program where if it's success, we need to go ahead and check if the file with the user's name already exists in the directory so that it doesn't get overwritten. So we're going to have to use a loop for this. Uh, so for name check in all accounts. So all accounts was an array of all the files that we have, remember? Now what we're doing is we're going through each file name that is in this all accounts array. And we're going to check if it matches with the name that we received. So we're going to say if the name that we're given matches any of the files the so name check any of the file names from the already existing files then we need to do notif.config um, foreground equals red again because this is an error sort of thing equals accounts already exists so they're not allowed to create an account because it already exists and at this point we would return and just exit the program so now next we need to do else, else we just create the account. So new file is it going to be the variable we use equals open name comma in write mode. So it's going to create a new file that's going to have the file name of whatever name you enter in this, um, whatever name you give yourself in this application. And then it's going to create a new file with that. It's not going to have any file extension. Now we do new file dot write. So we're going to go ahead and write some information. We're going to write it with the name that you gave it. 
So inside the file we need to type in your name on the first line, plus uh, forward slash n, which will create a blank line. And then we do new file dot write again. Next thing we're going to write is the password, plus forward slash n, because we need another blank line. So it's one field of information per line. New file dot write. Uh, do, 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 do. age plus n and then finally new file dot write oops I almost can not get an error there because I spelled it wrong gender plus forward slash n and then finally make sure to close the file because if you don't close the file the changes won't be saved file dot close now we need to go ahead and do a notification to say that the account has been created successfully. So foreground equals green, comma text equals account has been created. Woohoo! Right. So that brings us to the end of the code. So if everything runs successfully, that wraps up today's session. If not, we have to deal with what has gone wrong with it. So we're going to click on register. We're going to type in actual... Okay, let's go ahead and fail it first. So register. All fields required. Let's type in a name. Johan. Let's try registering now. Still. Cool. 21. Still doesn't want to do it. Obviously, because we have validation. Mail. Nope. We need password too. So the password's going to be password. And now it should just work. And it says account has been created. Now if I click on register again, it says account already exists because it knows that it's literally just gone ahead and created a file with Johan. So when it click when we click on registration, the validation once again to make sure that this name doesn't exist in a in a file directory. And if it does, it says it already exists. So as many times as I create this, it won't overwrite the previous one. So I can close this and just to verify that it's working, we are going to go into my file directory which was banking GUI app and we have a new file indeed that says Johan. Now if I go ahead and press F2 and add a .txt extension to this and open it, as I said before, the first line includes my first or, or the name that I gave it. Then we have a blank line. Then uh, my password was password, which is why it's written out as password because I, my password was actually password. Then we have a new line, we have the age and we have a new line and we have our gender. So we've pretty successfully um, managed to register a user and save the details into a file and also add validation. Now I'm going to go ahead, make sure to get rid of the .txt extension, otherwise your program will not work properly on validation. So it needs to not have any file extension, just like that. Okay, so that was it for today's tutorial guys. Hope I have been able to help you out. This is quite an interesting project and it could be one of your big projects that you can show off in your portfolio really well. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for videos after this, please post them in the community tab. Um, I'm going to be posting the next few parts of this video very soon. Like always, the code for this program is going to be in the description. However, I do not encourage you to just copy and paste the code. I encourage you to go through the tutorial and learn how this works because that way you actually take something away from this. And if you guys could share this video among your fellow programmers, that would be amazing. Also guys, I'm going to be linking my Discord channel for our Discord channel for this channel in the description as well. So if you guys could go ahead and join that, it's very chilled out. You can meet new people on there, speak to them about um, programming, I don't know, make friends I guess. And you can also mention new ideas for videos because I am on there most of the time and it's a lot easier for me to see new ideas that you may post. Um, anyway guys, I'm not going to bore you anymore. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.